Now it really is time we stop killing so many of our patients. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, that was a bit of a melodramatic introduction, but it, it is a really serious condition that we're talking about today because it's a leading cause of morbidity and mortality generally in the population. But what is arguably of even more concern is it's a leading cause of morbidity and mortality in the patients that we care for. It's the leading cause of sickness and death in our patients, in poorly people, and in hospitalised situations. So we really need to get a handle on this and reduce the amount of people that are dying from venothromboembolism. Now, what do we mean by venothromboembolism? Well, veno relates to the venous system. So this is a pathology of veins. Thromboembolism venothromboembolism. Well, a thrombus is a blood clot. So when a blood clot forms in a vessel where it is not supposed to, in fact, there's never a time when there are supposed to be blood clots in vessels. This is always a pathological situation. A thrombus exists. A thrombus is that blood clot at the site where it formed. So if a blood clot forms in a particular part of the vein, say in a deep vein in the muscles in the leg, then that is a thrombus because that blood clot exists where it formed. So this condition is veno, thrombo, and the next part is embolism. Now embolism is a condition where bits break off from that clot and float away in the circulation. So a thrombus is the blood clot, then emboli can break away from that original thrombus. And if you think about it, if, if we've got blood going through a vein and little bits break off of the blood clot, then can you see they're just going to float in the venous system? They're just going to float with the venous return. And that means they're going to go up to the right side of the heart and from the right side of the heart they're going to go to the lungs. So what normally happens is that this condition begins in the veins of the leg. And if it's in the deep veins in the leg, that's called a deep venous thrombosis, a DVT. And if bits of that break off, eventually those emboli will lodge in the lungs. That's called a pulmonary embolism. So deep venous thrombosis will cause pulmonary embolism. And venothromboembolism is an umbrella term that describes deep venous thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. So in the old days we used to say DVTPE, deep venous thrombosis pulmonary embolism, but now we say uh, VTE, venothromboembolism. It's, a, it's an all-embracive uh, term. Now in the US and Europe, um, venothromboembolism, that's PE and uh, DVT, actually kills more people than breast cancer, prostate cancer, HIV, AIDS, traffic accidents, all combined. It's quite an incredible cause of death. And of course, um, breast cancer is the leading cancer in, in women. Prostate cancer is the most common cancer uh, in, in men. So this is actually killing an awful lot of people. And globally, it's been calculated that someone will die of venothromboembolism every six seconds. And one in four people in the world actually die from uh, causes related to blood clots. Quite an incredible uh, cause of morbidity and mortality. And venothromboembolism is the number one um, cause of death, or preventable cause of death, in hospitals and after discharge. Now, I can hear you saying, well, I haven't seen that many people die of uh, venothromboembolism. And that's because... I was in the same situation when I first looked at this epidemiology, I thought this is incredible, this doesn't relate to my experience. But of course, most of my patients in, patients in hospital are discharged after a short period of time and I don't see them very often after that. And unfortunately, many die after they've been in our care. So this accounts for people dying in hospital and people dying after discharge, but as a result of hospitalisation or as a result of the illness they've been suffering from. And in the UK, um, up to 55% of the total number of uh, VTEs, venothromboembolisms, that occur, 
occur during or after hospitalisation. So of 100 people in the UK um, have a venothromboembolism, 55 of those will be associated with hospitalisation, either in hospital or after their discharge from hospital, making it by far the leading uh, preventable cause of hospital death. And in Europe, there are over half a million. The figure I've got is 544,000 VTE-related deaths every year. Clots kill more than 25,000 patients in England every year, hospital patients. It's an incredible, incredible cause of uh, mortality in hospital patients. So uh, th this accounts for 10% of all patients who die in hospital. And again, this is quite incredible because people are, in hospital are more likely to die than people out of hospital because they go there because they're sick. And, and, and yet 10% uh, of all patients who die in hospital uh, die of a venothromboembolism. Definitely the number one cause of preventable mortality. And this condition we can call a hospital acquired thrombosis. So it's quite common now to talk about hospital acquired infection but we should also be talking about hospital acquired thrombosis which is a far bigger cause of morbidity and, and mortality. And of course many patients who develop this seem fine when, when they are discharged. We discharge what we think is a healthy patient, but then in the days and, and even weeks after their discharge from our care, they can get a venothromboembolism and die from this condition. Now, it is more common in older people, but it affects young people as well. I can think of several people from my personal contacts that have died um, in their early 40s from this condition. So it's one we really need to learn about, we really need to prevent.